I got another small floor rack to hold four of uh, my newer acquisitions, namely some Daisy, vintage Daisy BB guns. And the subject of this video is this Daisy Model 99 Target Special. Got the, the globe front sight, and I had to buy a new four sided lock nut rear peep sight. I don't know if you can see the uh, front sight inserts there. They gave me about five different ones, and only one of them is a plain post and a circle with little wings on either side. I'll show you in a minute. I, uh, I'll show you how I fixed it up and cleaned it and everything. I gotta load it. And this one came with the original Daisy cleated leather sling. All, all cleaned up and oiled and such. And this thing looks really good for being built in January 1967. I got one of the one of the posts with the circle in the middle where the, the circle part is kind of thin. Some of them are thicker, some of them are thinner. I don't think the, the center hole in, in the side insert is any different size, although I could be wrong, but they are pretty close. And I'll show you what I need in a minute here. And another one. This is the Eagle Model 98, built November 9th, 1961. I'm missing the vertical stock bolt, but since I found the four-sided lock nut and peep sight for the 99 at JG Air Guns, most of their listings have this nut right here listed on the, on the stock through bolt, which was missing. But this blue nut fits in, fits in the looks department really well. But you can see this thing is still wobbly. It needs that vertical bolt that goes in here. And it's, it's got the, the shooter's promise or creed there, you might say. This is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine, <laughs> etc. Marine credo there. Uh, anyway, I found a reproduction sling on, from an eBay seller that has 13 different ones. That, that's how he lists it in his uh, description. They got the web slings in different colors. It also, the, the one is kind of a cream color, like a tan, and a couple colors of olive drab, and they're all like 7 8 inch, like this one. But this is a really good reproduction of the cleated leather sling. And right there, it's been engraved 2021, so this one's a year old. Top grade leather or something, it's not very thick, but real supple. And you can see on this one, it's still got some of the gold scroll work, but not a lot. And you flip it down, and it's the Regular buckhorn sight. You flip the buckhorn down and you got the peep sight. I think I need to straighten the front sight blade a little off. It was light as these things are, 
it's easy to study him to shoot. And uh, one of the guys on the Facebook Airborne group was telling me what, what the name of this is. This fancy European style four stock. It's plastic but the lighter colors kind of neat. Like a light colored blue or something. Oh, and you can see the Daisy Eagle thing on that side there. And it shoots pretty hard. So when I find this uh, vertical stock bolt, we can test this one. I know this one's going to work for us. Tighten up these little things that hold the hold the lever. They're getting a little loose over time. But otherwise, this, this again is another one that's in real good shape. All the stampings and everything are there. As a matter of fact, this one was built in Plymouth, Michigan, at the original factory. Like another one I got over here, the. Uh, Red Rider Carbine number 111 model 40. Since it since that one has the aluminum cocking lever and plastic stocks, it was built in 1953 to 54. But anyway. Oh that those reproduction cleated leather slings are like 30 bucks from that eBay seller. There's only one that's got them. Does a wonderful job of, of duplicating them things. I think it's a maybe a hair darker than, than this this one over here on the model 99 but it's darn close. Another one of the cleats there. And it's got the uh, little loops that hold the straps together because it's basically a two-piece strap that's cleated together right here where you adjust the length of it with this one and that one. And it, it seems to me it comes with it comes with the sling swivel. They look a lot like the original ones. I still have one of these brass colored steel ones on the Eagle 98 there, but since they come on a reproduction sling and glued wire, I don't think there's quite as a thick a gauge as this original, but pretty close. I had to remove the one that was still on it. Okay, so now that we've done that, Let's, let's get to how I did some minor work on these things. Here is the front sight insert I chose to try initially. Thought it would go well with the peep sights. There's like five different ones and most of them kind of look like this one. And just the inner circle is thicker on some of them I think. Maybe the hole in the center is slightly smaller. It doesn't look like by much. Anyway, here is the front globe sight. Now, there's a bushing that goes back about that far, and there's a spring in here. You can see it springs back. It's held in by these two tabs right there. Now, here's a fingernail notch with this bushing back here. That, or the rear of the bushing at any rate. And you, I can't hardly do it to show you, but you push in with your, with your thumbnail or some other device to put the insert in there because there's a slot, a vertical slot it goes in, and then here's a horizontal notch on both sides. For the wings to go in. Okay, let's see if I can balance this camera while I 
so I can balance this camera while I get this. Mount it in there and then I can adjust it vertically. Oh, I can't get that on there. Gotta screw it all the way in there. Well, now it won't. I can't get it. Tightened up. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta mess with this. I can't do this with one hand. Hold the camera up. Dang it! It has the Teflon in it. It shines it up real nice. It's some kind of paint. It's not exactly a gloss black either some other durable like a black that's got a little bit of pewter color in it like the early Crossman 760 uh, variant 1 the receiver was painted this sort of a dark pewter like color but there it is for now and we'll, tomorrow we'll I'll set up something something about I gotta I'll put some, another I gotta, I gotta make a BB gun backstop to put the targets on on top of the target box I got on the floor over there and we'll see what we get can't shoot real far in here as you can see I'm sitting on the corner of the room by the desk and this is even with my head so you can see we got a couple of yards there but a couple of yards is better than none okay and here we have the buttstock through bolt on the Eagle 98. And I'm going to try to get that blue nut on there. Okay, so it fits. That's the nut from JG Air Guns that when you go to separate listings for the various Daisy rifles and whatnot. This nut, the same number and everything, is listed in the individual listings, so it's a pretty common part. So it does fit the buttstock through bolt. Now, if they just had had the vertical bolt that goes in there, it'd be great. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can tighten this thing up. That's uh, Umarex uh, cable bore cleaner handle that also holds uh, one of six different screwdriver tips that fit that in. You put the cleaner flexible rod thingy in that end, but real nice screwdriver. Any screwdriver bits fit, fit various screws in these air guns real good. I had to back this bolt. Oh no, I'm shaking. There. I backed it off a couple of turns so I could hold the nut with my thumb and forefinger on my right hand and tighten it with my left hand. There we go. It's still loose. You have to have the vertical bolt. I can't shoot this one until I get this doggone thing tightened up. I was afraid of that. Can't get that one tight enough to, to keep it from flexing. You gotta have that, that vertical bolt. It's the buckhorn sight. And you flip it backwards for the peep sight. I'll show you that real quick. 
at least that nut's blued and you know fits the color scheme and everything real well. Looks like it belongs there. Just can't find this bolt that's got a a head with a, a shank that's smaller than the head that goes goes down in there before it hits the part with the threads. Got to hold that tighter. It's not going to shoot right. Okay, and here I took a box of cigars came in and cut it out because BB's these old BB guns generally can't shoot through cardboard very well. And I made a hole through it to, with, I forgot to leave some tabs on it so that uh, I can mount, mount these gamo targets on there with, with map pins to shoot at and it'll go through it. But uh, I got, I deflated some air pillows, stuck it in the bottom and then folded over the packing paper and put that on top of that to stop the BBs. So that should work. Okay, now to load the BBs in a Model 99 Target Special, being there's a lawsuit with Daisy from between the government and them about the gravity feed on the old their on their BB guns they produced for decades at that point when I was a kid in the 60s. So anyway, uh, you load the BBs in this little hole here in the spring loaded. We used to call this thing a comic. That's what I was told when I was a kid. Now you got this lever here that rides all the way up there against that strap, little strap that rolls around. You can see the BBs in there. I, I didn't load it all the way up. It holds like 50, I think. And there's a little slot right there. You got to catch that thing in so you can then turn it around to load the BBs. And then... And that should snap back against the BBs and you're all set. That's a spring-loaded mechanism. Works with the cocking lever. Hard as I know, I haven't tried it yet. That's the end that goes down in, into the, oh, that, like a ceiling grommet down where the piston is. Yeah, put this thing back in and we'll, we'll try it out. Okay, let's give gear a go. I had to guess at where to, to do, put the other adjust the elevation. That BB just fall on the peak side here, so. Infinity camera tape on this thing. I gotta remount the. Well, it's a golf tube that covered with that tape too. I strapped on this side of the rocker to stick my trigger stick in. So, you know, go and feel it. I need to put a longer axle on the front, a lawn more reason and duplicate that on the, the rear post here. But. The old, the old gravity feed, you had to hold it vertical like just a cock it, so I just grab it like that. It's even more leverage like that. It looks like I hit to the right of the, the left, the nine on the left side of the hose. I'll show you. slack on you could do a wrap 
quick in the military. But just to rest the leather sling on something to shoot with, and you can pull up on that with the sling that's tight, and that helps you steady yourself. On the, on the bullseye line, tagging on the numbers of the lines is meritorious in the military, by the way. Some of you know that, some of you don't. Being from a military family, I was taught certain things. Since I first learned to shoot with spoils of war at age 10 and 66, the year before this was built in my way. Screw it up the thing on the end of the barrel here. This one doesn't have a bottle cap like the gravity. Thing. That's another way you can tell. Oh, you see the bees there. Though. This thing. Well, sit like that until you get Jimmy around the right way to where it's a little too thinny on the bottom where the feed is, like I say, on the bottom, and then it will slide down to a place where you can actually contact the thread to screw it in. Front, the loop on the front side insert, it's about the same diameter as the, the bullseye on the target, so let's I guess that's good. Cool. This thing isn't shooting yet. I've got a few shots and then every other shot and then nothing. I gotta try this Eagle 98 here. And just got to know. Okay, this one sounds like it shoots harder. This one's got the bottle cap where you got you got that little hole, feed hole right there. Get that leather thing they have. It sort of looks like a scoop with a funnel shape on the end that you pull the beaters in with. I got the Red Rider one a couple of years ago. This one is Daisy Bullseye BB Shot. Uh, 80 year anniversary 2020 or something like that. I can't quite read it. The 80 year anniversary. Oh, that was pretty cool. That'll go in the display case over here with the Red Rider too. You go to the Daisy Museum shop. And get these collector tins or the regular sort of an oval shaped plastic uh, canister of BBs. Now this one's got a cast target trigger. That's nice. With the peep sight there. Let's see if I can stick this thing. Oops. <laughs> well now we know it shoots. Like I said, this one, since it's got, it looks like the bottle cap thing on the end, you have to uh, hold it upright like that to cock it and get the BB to go in. 
of slack on it. Target special was more powerful than this one. It looks like it sounded like it was bouncing off. I can't see that ball well enough to, to tell. You hear that secondary sound? You know what? I didn't oil this one. Okay, well. I put like two drops of Macron secret sauce in this, you know, where it says oil here. So oil is the, the piston seal and that, that felt, uh, that's like an oil ring on a piston that like Crossman uses to oil the, the cylinder where the piston slides back and forth anyway. And then I put a few, three or four drops a ballistol in there to mix with it, and that that seems to work rather well to get the, to keep the piston seals lubricated and such. Peach sight, not that great. It's you'll you'll see how I set up the the BB, uh, BB trap over there in a minute. Yeah, in, in the other part of the video, I'm not sure how I'm going to line up all this, the various bits of this video. But, it's surprising the Target Special actually goes through the target with authority after oiling it. Now this one here, this Eagle 98 is a little weak because I, I forgot to oil that one and let it sit overnight. But I gotta wait till I can find the vertical buttstock screw anyway and then I'll have it uh, ready to rock and roll by then. It's good to see you guys again. I haven't done a I haven't worked on air guns in a while, and I was spending more time working on my marriage, which really wasn't doing that great over winter, which is a pretty good time to do that since you're getting cabin fever anyway, you know what I mean? You get to be my age, you uh, start to learn what's, what's really important in life. Okay, okay. I know you. I know you're thinking of Conan when his master has him. What is important in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of the women. You gotta love that part. That's old school. I often wonder if all the war horses like my father and my father-in-law and their friends I met from the war. And all that. About the same way. <laughs> Makes you wonder sometimes, doesn't it? A little food for thought on a beautiful Sunday. So keep your gun lubed, keep the barrel clean, and your powder dry. <laughs>